Even the most innocent looking things sometimes have dark secrets hidden inside them. And what could be more innocent than a Hello Kitty mermaid? Except for the fact that it was actually a coffin. Inside the toy was a human skull. And how it ended up in a filthy apartment would become one of Hong Kong's most notorious cases. I'm talking about the Hello Kitty murder. The story you're about to hear is simply unbelievable. Hi, I'm Chris, and thanks for watching True Crime Recaps. When Fan Man Yi was 23, she was working as a nightclub hostess in Hong Kong's notorious Red Light District. And that's where she met the man who would end her life, Chan Man Lok. He was known for his good looks and steady flow of meth and cash, and his cruelty as a drug dealer and pimp were already legendary at the age of 34. One of his favorites at the nightclub was Fan Man Yi, and she had grown up unloved and unwanted in a state-run home for girls, a soulless and unforgiving orphanage that kicked her into the street at age 15. And she never managed to shake the bad luck that had followed her from birth. After experimenting with drugs, she developed an addiction which led her to work in several clubs and brothels. And one night after a visit from Chan, she spotted something on the floor near the bed. It was his wallet. And while he was getting dressed, he dropped it and left it behind. There was $4,000 inside. It was too tempting. And she grabbed it, hoping he wouldn't know where it was and wouldn't suspect her for it. Almost everything went wrong. In a matter of minutes, Chan stopped to buy a drink. And he realized immediately that his wallet was gone. And he had a pretty good idea what had happened to it. When he questioned Fan, she reluctantly gave it back to him with all the money still inside. But... Not surprisingly, the drug lord didn't take kindly to her deception, and he insisted that not only would she pay him back the 4000 she tried to take, but she would also owe him an extra $10,000 for the insult, and he knew full well she could not afford to pay back the debt, so he offered her an alternative. Go work the streets for him and hand over every dollar she earned. What else could she do? But before too long, it was clear the arrangement wasn't enough to satisfy him. He wanted her blood and tears, too. On his orders, two of his loyal sidekicks, Luang Xing Cho and Luang Wai Lun, dragged her to an apartment he kept in a rundown building in Kowloon. Imagine a place straight out of a horror movie. The walls were covered with peeling paint. There was a soiled mattress lying on the floor in the middle of scattered trash. It was also a shrine to Hello Kitty. Everything from sheets to dishcloths to stuffed animals was Hello Kitty themed. There was no escaping the little white cat. There was also no escaping the nightmare either. Fan Man Yi spent a month in that terrible place being tortured by the three men. They came to the apartment every day and night to violate and abuse her. Their only limit was their twisted imagination. They melted plastic straws on her feet and beat her with metal bars, water pipes, and sticks. When she screamed in pain, chili oil was poured into her wounds. If she complained about her aching stomach, they laughed and fed her human feces. With every passing day, there seemed to be no end to the sadistic things they did to her. She suffered even when they weren't there. Her body was wrapped in electrical wires and hung upside down overnight from a hook on the ceiling. And there were times when they weren't alone. Sometimes they had a teenager with them. Ah Fong was only 13 years old, but she was one of Chan's girlfriends. It, it's unclear why he brought her along, maybe to impress her with his power or to scare her into obedience, but it would prove to be a mistake. And she watched as he kicked Fan in the head over and over, and they encouraged her to join in on the abuse. Later, when she was asked why she tortured the woman, she only shrugged and said, I had the feeling it was for fun. But it wasn't fun for long. Fan succumbed to her injuries and died, but her spirit didn't rest in peace. In May 1999, Ah Fong went to the police with a wild story. She told them the ghost of Fan had been haunting her dreams and wouldn't leave her in peace until her body was found. Despite her ranting and raving, the police didn't take her seriously. Until she confessed, she helped to torture the woman. Then they started to listen. And finally, she convinced them to follow her to Chan's apartment. It seems the group had locked their victim in the bathroom before they went out to party a few weeks earlier. When they came back, they didn't bother to check on her before going to sleep. 
And later that morning, Ah Fong found Fan's body in the bathtub. They were worried the stench of her decomposing body would give them away. So they came up with a plan to get rid of her before anyone noticed. And you can probably guess that it was just as diabolical as what they did while she was alive. They cut her up in the bathtub, then boiled her body parts, and what was left over went in the garbage, all except one of her teeth and her internal organs, which they stored in the fridge. Her head they saved for last. As a joke, her skull was stuffed into the large Hello Kitty mermaid doll and left on the dirty mattress. No wonder the poor woman was haunting Ah Fong. Even in death, she was trapped in that place. Until the teenager went to the police and got the men arrested. In exchange for her testimony, Ah Fong got immunity for her part in the depraved torture. And what Fan's exact cause of death was will always be a mystery, but her captors suggested she overdosed on meth. They were found guilty of manslaughter after the jury decided they wanted to torture Fan, not kill her. The verdict came with a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 20 years, but so far it looks like they're still behind bars. But in this case, out of sight is not out of mind. No one can forget the evil things they did. After Fan's remains were found, people avoided the apartment building where she died. Even the residents moved out if they could. Eventually it was torn down, but no amount of construction can ever remove the horrible memories. Thanks for watching, and don't go away. More crime in half the time is coming up right now in this next recap. Remember to subscribe and tap the bell so you never miss a story. Until next time, take care.